The green books. I want to hear from the two current and former professional golfers about green books. Now, is that really an unfair advantage? Anybody in the field can buy one. They're not limited to any one player. It's an accurate representation of what the green looks like. You can see where I'm going yep. with this. Yeah. Do you oppose the idea of the green book? Well, not everybody can have one because you do have to have about $250 to actually purchase one. So you got to have is, 250 to go buy one. Is that what they cost? Yeah, that's really? what they cost now. So the problem I've got with it with, is, um, you know, you're already giving players information. You can go buy a nice yardage book. You can go buy a great caddy. You know, essentially sure. that's a service that you're paying for is you can get an experienced caddy, one that's either been at the golf course you're playing or uh, you know, been caddying on tour for a long time. You, you get a whole location chart on the first tee. So wh where, where do you draw the line and say, well, you, I mean, you can't have, you can have this, but you can't have that. Precisely. And it's, and, and how, it's is, tough... how is that any different than a yardage book? Yeah. It's I, that's... effectively giving factual information about the golf course. That's where I find it difficult to, to ju really justify going through with a rule change or some right. sort of banning of it. And I think Todd Lewis made up a great point saying, even if they did ban it, even if the rules of RNA and USGA came together and said, we don't want this a part of the game, PGA Tour can completely ignore that and put their own local rule in. And frankly, PGA Tour, LPGA Tour, European Tour are about the only tour players that are going to be even have access to right. this book. So I, I find it a bit of a waste of time and energy. I mean, yeah, I appreciate them I, trying to address right. things in the game quickly, but... So, so the idea is, well, you can read the greens in this book and you read them a little bit quicker. Um, right. But that's not really the case because now you've got a yardage book, you've got a green book. They're talking about maybe adding a yardage measuring device. It's not like you throw the other two things out and just rely on one. Now, all of a sudden, you've got all of these tools that players and caddies are possibly going to be using. So to me, it's all about pace of play. You know, let's find a very good pace of play policy that says, yeah, you can have these tools, they're available to everybody, but we got to get the ball rolling in 45 seconds. You know, I mean, that, that's, that's what it comes down to for me. And, and it's still, even though you have all this information, you still have to execute the shot. And I don't know that having the green book is going to make it go any faster. I wonder if having that much information is going to slow the game down because players are going to sit there and read every single break I agree. in the entire green. That's why the pace of play policy becomes very, very important as players add tools to the toolbox.